Hello everyone. My name is Kristen Palzolo. I'm the community manager for the CA Security Community. And today's webcast is titled Simplifying Secure Server Access Control. Why upgrade to CA Privileged Access Manager Server Control? So today you'll be hearing from Steve McCuller and Mike DeLay, and they will be presenting, and then we will follow it up with live Q&A at the end of this presentation today. If you have any questions while either of them are presenting, feel free to post them in the chat window or the Q&A panel, and we'll get to them as soon as we can. I'm recording today's webcast, and we'll be sharing the replay link as well as the slides with everyone who attends this webcast today. So look out for a follow-up email from me later today. And we'll also be posting those to the CA security community, which you can find at ca.com slash talk security. All right, so that's enough from me. I'm going to pass it over to Steve. Thank you so much, Steve. We've been doing a lot of these webcasts together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kristen. Yes, thank you. It's good to be back. And hello again, everyone. So uh, let's get into today's presentation. I will be talking for a little while and then passing it over to Mike DeLay. Uh, and I maybe once again just introduce myself. I am the market focused advisor for CA's Privileged Access Management Solutions. And Mike DeLay is the senior uh, director of product management uh, for that same set of solutions. So I'm going to kick it off. Uh, tee it up a little bit, then pass it over to Mike for a discussion about the product and the roadmap. So <clears throat> today we're going to be covering a, a number of topics uh, regarding the privileged account or privileged access management. What is the problem? Why does it need fixing? Uh, how privileged access management can provide countermeasures to help you with security risks that are uh, presented by privileged accounts. Uh, in particular, how CA can help. So we'll be highlighting uh, some of the capabilities and benefits of CA Privileged Access Manager as well as Privileged Access Manager Server Control. And uh, then we'll be, again, giving control to Mike to talk about some of the new features and what's ahead on the roadmap. And of course, Q&A is available throughout through the chat and we'll be dedicating a time to that at the end of the presentation. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk <clears throat> and CA has been contributing as well with regard to helping enterprises um, implement digital transformation to take advantage of new technologies like cloud computing and big data and mobility. And it, for competitive advantages, for employee productivity, for ease of doing business, a lot of organizations have adopted many different technologies and, and transforming their business to be keeping up with the leading edge of digital uh, capabilities. And going hand in hand with that, it has, maybe it hasn't escaped your notice that over the last several years, there's been an alarming number of security breaches. It's, there's kind of a cause and effect. The, the more you adopt these new technologies, more you open your enterprise up, the greater your attack surface gets, and therefore there's more risk associated with it. So, and these enabling technologies do need to be secured. And a universal uh, theme throughout uh, the breaches that you've been seeing uh, is the abuse of privileged accounts or privileged access uh, or privileged access. So privileged access management is actually a countermeasure for that. The common thread of, of, among all of these accounts is they involve privilege escalation. And the reason for that should be obvious. If I'm a, an attacker on the outside, I want to become somebody on the inside. And once I can become somebody on the inside, I really would like somebody with a high level of privilege. So privilege escalation and abuse of privileged accounts is a very important uh, step in the kill chain that attackers use to compromise your enterprise. The motivations may be different. The technique's pretty much always the same, though. So cybercrime, maybe they're looking to steal credit card information. There's a market for that, and uh, some of the notable uh, cases are, are highlighted here. Cyber espionage, where they're stealing personal information. There, there's actually also a market for that as well. And sometimes it's just either malicious or uh, such as something that could impact your business. Maybe sometimes uh, the motivation would be making a political statement, holding a company for ransom. Uh, various various things, but they, the point is that the attackers all have a very negative and disruptive 
uh, effect on your business. The again, the common thread that our common thread through all these attacks has been abuse, misuse of high privileged accounts. The accounts themselves are are somewhat ubiquitous and are used uh, by uh, administrators to perform legitimate functions of keeping systems up, running, and optimized. The, the capabilities that the administrators are using are actually protected from regular users, so you require a high level of privilege to perform administration. But along with that high level of privilege, thereby bypassing normal security controls, comes the potential for abuse from insiders, but also those accounts are targeted by uh, outside parties as well. And uh, when these high privilege administrative accounts are breached, there's virtually unlimited amount of damage that the attacker can perform. Uh, as a countermeasure to uh, a, the abuse that has been uh, opposed by high privileged accounts, and uh, there, there's now the auditors are uh, becoming more and more stringent about controls that they want to see in place that so that your business or organization can demonstrate that you have effective controls around high privilege accounts. Some are more prescriptive than others, but they all want to see that all these regulations, they want to see that you are demonstrating uh, adequate controls. I think it goes without saying that uh, compliance isn't enough. And uh, if you are serious about security, you uh, will be uh, um, applying risk reduction that will naturally lead to compliance. If you if you do set compliance as a goal in itself, uh, you may take little solace from the fact that most of those companies that I showed you on the last slide who were breached were also compliant. So uh, compliance in itself, although an important business objective, and uh, it, it may not be enough for you to reduce your risk to the point where you can be safe from a breach. But the, again, compliance has become uh, a very important business goal over the years. Privileged access management has become an important component of compliance. So as you reduce your risk and lower your uh, uh, the amount of risk that you have from privileged accounts, you're also going to be able to achieve some of these goals that the auditors are setting out for you for regulatory compliance. So again, the business goals for uh, implementing a risk reduction strategy around privileged accounts basically involve uh, five related things. One is that you want to not be the next victim of a breach. So stopping the target of attacks, if they're using privileged accounts as part of this attack, then it behooves me to put in a countermeasure to manage these privileged accounts, to manage that privileged access. The second is mitigating insider threat. The, uh, again, administrators need the authority, they need to have the ability to do their job, which is to keep keep uh, systems up, running, optimized, and so on, but you need to balance that with the uh, limiting what they can do in the, in the sense that they don't go beyond their job description. This is actually kind of a hard, hard problem to solve uh, because you do, you do want to keep those systems optimized. It's the administrator's job to do that. You want to give them enough authority to do their job, but you still want to keep it under control so that you know that what they're doing is not, not being abused. Uh, regulatory compliance, again, very important. Either we see this really in uh, almost all of our customers who are looking to do something around privileged access management are motivated <clears throat> not just by risk reduction, but also either they're uh, trying to address an audit finding that they've already got, they're trying to get ahead of an audit, audit finding that they expect to get if they do nothing, or uh, they are trying to make the next round of inspection on their compliance report easier than it was last time. So compliance uh, is always in the mix with regard to why do something about privileged access management. Another is be able to improve efficiencies. Now, they, th there are trade-offs in any kind of preventive security controls, but as I mentioned earlier, administrators still have to be able to do their job. So implementing privileged access management in such a way that you can still allow people to do their job, perhaps even do it more effectively, uh, is an important goal uh, uh, of privileged access management. And then addressing the entire enterprise. Not to, it's Gone are the days that we can uh, look at just a traditional brick and mortar data center, secure what we can see, and, and uh, be confident that we've reduced our risk to an acceptable level. Digital transformation has actually made that attack surface much greater. Uh, the vulnerabilities are much more elusive. 
And uh, so the entire hybrid enterprise from on-prem to SaaS to infrastructure as a service and so on needs to be addressed by whatever you're using for privileged access management. CAA had, uh, as a result of an acquisition of Exedium last year, launched uh, <clears throat> a re uh, uh, we were already a leader in the space, but we kind of relaunched a new product for us, CA Privileged Access Manager. This is a, a, a network-based security tool. It is actually stood up as an appliance-based form factor. It's, it works as a bastion host, so kind of a man in the middle, if you will, between users and the privileged uh, accounts and the systems that they're controlling access to. Privileged Access Manager is full featured, easy to deploy. It's become a very popular product for us. We're absolutely thrilled at the uh, uh, results we've gotten and the adoption that our customers have given us with regard to the acquisition of Exedium and uh, all the advantages that they've seen in this product. So it's a comprehensive uh, purpose-built appliance that has all the features that are necessary and stands up generally without an agent to broker uh, connections between privileged users and the systems and the privileged accounts that they're controlling access to. And adding to this def defense in depth approach, CA Privileged Access Manager Server Control uh, provides a agent-based, host-based solution for those really critical servers that you want to provide an additional level of protection to. Now, Privileged Access Manager Server Control can work with or without Privileged Access Manager. They work very well in concert together. They're not dependent on each other, though. So there will be an integration that takes place, but the two products themselves can operate independently. You can run Privileged Access Manager without, uh, without server control. You can also run server control in environments that maybe you're not running Privileged Access Manager at yet. But generally, you would say that Privileged Access Manager provides 100% of the controls that you need for most of your environment but for that uh, set of servers that is really high risk, maybe your financial servers or, or, or something like that, maybe 20% of your environment, a lot of our customers are seeing the value of going and, and deploying this powerful host-based solution to defend those servers even further. It really provides an unparalleled in-depth protection of those critical servers. Even a super user is subject to controls that are applied. Uh, very powerful, highly granular access control uh, the ability to segregate duties even to the named super user accounts, such as Windows Administrator or the Unix Linux uh, root account. Being able to limit access to files that may contain important confidential information or configuration files. Uh, there's a built-in replacement for commercial sudo that is more secure than what you provide, what's provided by the freeware sudo solutions that are very difficult to administer. Uh, the trusted computing base to ensure that the integrity of your systems at configuration files, but also executables and binaries. And unlike purely monitoring solutions, Privileged Access Manager Server Control actually provides um, a proactive defense of these system resources and can even defend against it in the case where perhaps there's been a zero-day vulnerability on a server that got attacked directly and somebody has taken over the root account, for example, Privileged Access Manager Server Control is still going to be effective. It's still going to defend the, system, the resources on that system, the files, the processes, and so on, from being accessed by unauthorized users in a way that really no other product can do. The, the, it also includes what we used to call UNAV, or the Unix Authentication Bridge. This provides a, a real uh, win for an identity management solution in the Unix Linux environment. So it gets you out of the business of provisioning users in your local files, and uh, such as the Etsy files uh, that come with Unix. Instead, you can manage Unix credentials, Unix identities through Active Directory, <clears throat> excuse me, and have people authenticate to your Unix systems using their domain credentials, taking advantage of Kerberos and the security that comes with that, as well as single sign-on. So the Unix authentication bridge is a component of Privileged Access Manager Server Control. So the combination of Privileged Access Manager Privileged Access Management Server Control provides this nice de defense and depth solution that complements the identity and access management that we also provide with regard to user provisioning and governance and so on. So very natural play, uh, and uh, we believe that the combination of 
Privileged Access Manager and Privileged Access uh, Manager Server Control gives us uh, a leg up on the competition, uh, really gives us the best of both worlds. The strongest Privileged Access Management solution coupled with the most powerful host-based security control for a combined solution that really cannot be beat. So the, the way the Privileged Access Manager Server Control works is it does run on your servers and it if multiple people are using the same shared account, Privileged Access Manager Server Control knows who they were before they took that account and applies a, a authorization and auditing to the user, not of the, the user ID that they were using prior to the shared account. What that means is if you have two different users, Mike and Steve, who are both using the root account, truly got into a root shell, for example, on a Unix or Linux system, our product is actually going to be able to make distinctions between them because it knows that Mike is a system administrator, Steve is a DBA, and even though they're both using the root account right now, they have an unequal authority that's based on their job function. So if I try to do things that are outside of my job function, even if I'm using the root account, uh, Privileged Access Manager Server Control is going to be able to stop me uh, from doing the unauthorized action. It's also going to provide an audit trail that says that Steve, using the root account, did this on this date at this time that got stopped uh, for this reason. There is, because it works completely transparently at the, at the system level, there is no replacement of shells. There is no replacement of utilities. There is no user retraining required. It works completely transparently. It'll work with your, whatever applications you have running on that server. Uh, it will uh, work with whatever shells you have. Again, it's completely transparent and it's policy based and it's going to be effective against all users, even those who are running with super user authority. Some of the capabilities that you can deliver for a defense perspective using privileged access management server control include a feature called application jailing. This actually allows you to say that this application can do this, that, and the other, but if it tries to go outside of the, bo the box that you've confined it in, those actions could be, uh, could be blocked. This is actually a nice effective defense against a zero-day vulnerability that you know to exist. You can lock down which ports, incoming and outgoing TCP IP services, for example, that you would want to control. Uh, you can prevent unauthorized stopping and starting of Windows services control access to files, directories, prevent processes from being terminated, such as your database process, your application process, your syslog process. If I'm an attacker and I know your logging activity and going to your scene, the first thing I might want to try is to kill the syslog process because then I could, nobody's going to be alarmed that uh, there won't be alerts going off, right? We can defend the syslog process from being terminated by an unauthorized user, even if they're running as root. Trusted program execution, so if a program has been tampered with, you can prevent it from being executed until you inspect it and retrust it. Privileged account protection, who is authorized to use which privileged account on this server? Maybe I've logged into this box and now I'm uh, running as root and I want to use the Oracle account to do something. We can prevent that person from actually using the Oracle account. And those controls are going to be effective, again, even if they're running as root. Windows registry, this is sort of a, a uh, if you're if you're being attacked, one of the first things that a malware, for example, is going to try to do is insert itself in the registry. Well, we can prevent that registry update from su succeeding. We can also protect those Windows services from being terminated or even started started or stopped. Again, the incoming and outgoing TCP IP service control. You're on this box. We don't want you making an outbound TCP IP connection, or you can make the connection, but only if you're running one particular program, for example. That program, you go outbound, any other sort of outbound connection would be prevented. All of the policies are host-based. They're, they're contained on the server. Very, it throws very little overhead on the system. And the policies that are maintained there are all centrally stored. So you have an enterprise manager that allows you to distribute policies to endpoints. The policies are all contained locally but they're all centrally managed. And of course, it does include, <clears throat> excuse me, policy, uh, policy reporting as well as activity reporting. So CA PAM server control, what's new? It is, this is a reinvigoration of a product that we, we had in our uh, privileged identity management solution. And now we're, uh, 
decoupling the credential vault that we had through shared account management from this version of it and calling it PAM server control. And as such, we're now going to have a standalone user interface for policy management reporting. There's new reporting engine. There's a new message queue. And um, if you're paying attention to the news, you'll see very soon that we're going to have a new version of Privileged Access Manager, a version 2.7. And one of the beautiful things about that feature when it becomes available or when that, when, when that version comes out in a couple of weeks, we're going to be able to extend this accountability of the name user all the way back to the person who authenticated to, to CA PAM itself. So if I logged into CA Privileged Access Manager, the Bastion host, the, uh, a network-based Bastion host, I logged in there as Steve, and I uh, get the root account to log in directly to this uh, server that's protected by PAM server control, when I try to open a file or try to execute a program or try to kill a process, it's going, the, the product is going to ask not whether uh, root has the authority, but it'll know that it was Steve who checked out or took custody of the root password for uh, that system at that time. Very slick integration uh, that we're going to have between PAM and PAM server control. And one of the great things about this, for those of you who know this product, that we've, we've had it for a while, now that we're, we're repackaging it and, and investing in it, it's going to have a very nice uh, strategy and roadmap ahead. So the, uh, as, our, uh, as a uh, component of our uh, recommitment and deep commitment to the privileged access management market, we've done the acquisition of Exceedium last year, and now we're investing again, as it were, with uh, in, into privilege access manager server control. And so the one of the benefits of upgrading now is that you actually be in a position to take advantage of these uh, in, uh, future enhancements uh, to the roadmap as they become available. So the integration that we're going to have with PAM server control and between PAM and PAM server control is that these features that CA Privileged Access Manager delivers are still going to be in place uh, that provides this full featured appliance based form factor. But the user who is logging in to PAM uh, to CA Privileged Access Manager will capture that original ID and use that for the host based fine grain controls once the user logs into that server. So this is a very relevant integration. I, uh, it's going to be one of a number of integrations we're providing, but, uh, but th th this is a very important one to get the identity of that named user prior to them using that shared account from CA uh, Privileged Access Manager before they got onto the server. So I think uh, what I'll do here is um, pass this control back, uh, Kristen, back to Mike DeLay and uh, let him take a look at what's coming next. Okay, thanks, Steve. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as Steve said, my name is Mike DeLay. I am uh, Senior Director of Product Management for the PAM product line. Um, so what I wanted to do is just take a few minutes to give you some insight in terms of um, where we're investing uh, and where we're going with, with these products. In general, um, in terms of, of the focus areas that we have, there are three um, categories of where we're focusing our efforts. The first one is data breach prevention, right? And, and Steve touched on this a little bit um, earlier in the presentation, but making sure that, you know, our customers are not the next headline, providing all the capabilities that you need around protecting your most sensitive resources, managing the, the credentials, the privileged credentials to give you access to those resources, providing granular access controls, to ensure that somebody that does have access with a privileged credential can only do what's within their job function. The second one is hybrid enterprise protection. Um, if you look at our typical customer deployment, it ranges from on-premise data centers to software-defined data center with VMware's NSX platform that they, that they released over the past year to virtualization platforms and cloud platforms like, uh, you know, like VMware, um, Azure, um, AWS, to SaaS applications, right? It's a mixture of all of that. And so making sure that, um, that you're protected across the entire hybrid enterprise. And then lastly, making sure that 
the software itself fits nicely within the customer's security ecosystem, whether it be SIM solutions, service desk solutions, single sign-on solutions, and so forth. So one of the, the major things that we have planned when we talk about data breach prevention is privilege identity behavior analytics. So th this is um, being able to understand the user's normal behavior and with that identify any potential anomalies or potential risks within your organization. Um, but it's more than that. If you identify a threat or something that's a potential risk, rather than with other solutions that you see out there, you know, alert somebody after the fact, after that's already happened, right? Being able to automatically take action and automatically implement some mitigation steps. Uh, and some examples of that would be, you know, if somebody logs in, maybe they log in from a different device, maybe they're, um, you know, hopping or doing some server hopping while they're in within that session, we identify that as a risk, automatically enable session recording. Or if they're, if they're trying to perform an action that may be within their role, but they haven't normally performed that activity, um, so prompt some reauthentication, right? So, so different actions that you can take automatically to make sure that you're protected rather than, you know, send, send a notice after the fact and have somebody do some investigation on that. And in terms of, of server control, um, you know, going forward, there's, there's a number of different things that we're, that we're considering, and this is only just um, highlighting a few of them. So the first one is um, enhancing our policy management capabilities, uh, making sure that, um, that we have an easy and simplistic way to create, manage, deploy policies um, using a, a wizard-based approach, right? So really making it easier on the, on the administrative user to, uh, to manage those policies. The second one is extending on the platform support coverage that we offer today. Uh, and I highlighted one in particular that's, that's gaining some interest and traction out there in the market, which is to provide some support for containers, right, and, um, and specifically Docker containers. And then on the agent side of the house, um, in addition to platform support, just increasing the capabilities and the controls that we have. And one of those would be focusing on Unix platforms with P-Trace interception, so giving you the ability to intercept system calls. So just additional um, access control capabilities on the agent side, um, making it um, more simplistic and easier to administer for the, admin, for the uh, end users, and making sure that the, the platforms that we cover are the platforms needed um, and required by our customers. And then lastly, extending on the, um, uh, on the virtualization and cloud support, um, you know, we offer today, Steve touched on Privileged Access Manager. Uh, that product has a lot of capabilities and protection around cloud and, virtual, and virtualization platforms like VMware, VMware's NSX platform, AWS, for example. And, and just continuing to extend on that, and the next one sort of in line would be Microsoft Azure. Um, making sure, you know, that number one, um, the PAM runs in the Azure environment itself, managing the credentials um, required for, for Azure as well, um, offering the capabilities like session recording, and giving you playback, DVR-like playback capabilities there, and discovering new VMware um, or VM instances uh, within that platform. So just extending on that on that story, and that's one of the things where we really see as our differentiate one of our differentiators um, within our product line. And I'll end on on this last slide. I know this is a rather busy slide, but um, to just focus your eyes for a second on the bottom portion of the slide. This is server control. Um, this is the product that that, that uh, is was newly announced as, as being available, standalone product of our agent-based access control. Uh, a lot of things that you see here are what I just touched upon, um, some UI improvements, portability improvements, making sure that you can um, very easily install the software on the target systems themselves, um, integrating with CA Proofless Access Manager for that defense in depth protection, and then going forward, 
extending on the policy management capabilities, layering in some additional command interception capabilities, and extending on the platform coverage. Uh, and then up top, um, you see the roadmap for Privileged Access Manager, and it's being able to take advantage of all the new capabilities we'll be introducing in that product as well. Service management integration, um, enhanced device account and SSH key discovery so that you can reduce the overall risk within your environment by quickly discovering new devices, new privileged accounts as they come on board. Integrating with some of um, the other security products that we offer today, like single sign-on, um, the CA identity suite itself, um, and then integrating with behavior analytics um, that I mentioned before as one of our one of our key uh, marquee capabilities that we have planned going forward. And so I'll, I'll end there. I think the, the last thing I'll say is, um, and Steve touched on this, you know, um, making sure that, that those sensitive resources are protected um, requires really a defense in depth type of strategy. It's not one um, a solution really that can, that can make sure that you're, you know, 100% ultimately protected. But the more that you put at it, the more controls that you have in place, obviously can help you. Um, reduce that overall risk. And so if you put the two products together, you really get that defense and depth capability. Um, number of capabilities around managing credentials, um, you know, um, providing granular access controls. But then even, even in addition to that, just the monitoring and tracking of every user um, and their activity and tying it to that original user's ID, not just the fact that they're using a privileged account. And so with that, I'll, I'll stop here and, and see if uh, anybody has any questions. All right. Thanks, guys. If anyone has any questions, again, you can ask them in the chat window or the Q&A panel in WebEx. Or if you um, want to ask a question over the phone, you can unmute your line by pressing pound six or star six. If you're listening to the audio broadcast, I can enable the microphone on your computer so you can ask a question there if you click the phone icon with a question mark in WebEx. I've also opened up a poll, so please rate today's webcast. One question just came in. Um, he asked, we have CA Privileged Identity Manager 12.8. Does or will it make sense to migrate to CA Privileged Access Manager instead of upgrading to CA Privileged Identity Manager 12.9? Great question. Um, I'll take this one, Steve. So um, one thing to mention is that CA Privileged Identity Manager is a fully supported product. And so you absolutely can upgrade from 12.8 to um, PIM 12.9. If you want to take advantage of, um, some of a lot of the capabilities that we offer today in PAM, formerly X Suite, um, then I think you would certainly consider migrating up there. Um, in addition to the, to the other capabilities that I mentioned around, um, you know, enhancing the policy management capabilities and providing some of that agent-based um, additional controls um, with server control. So um, that's an upgrade option for you, absolutely. Um, but if you want to continue to use PIM and take advantage of some of the new capabilities that we introduced in 12.9, you can absolutely migrate to that, to upgrade to that as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Don't see any other questions at this time. Again, if you have a question, you can ask it in the chat window or the Q&A panel or over the phone if you press pound six or star six, or the phone icon with a question mark.
All right, if there's no other questions, I will close this out by posting a link to the CA Security Community, which is where we'll post the recording and slides from today's webcast. And if you think of any other questions, you can post them to the CA Security Community under the pre Privileged Access Management category or you can respond to the follow-up email that I will send out later today, and I'll make sure it gets to Steve and Mike. All right, thank you so much, Steve and Mike, for presenting today, and thank you everyone for attending. Please stay tuned for the next Privileged Access Management webcast. Um, we also have office hours coming up later this month, which are also posted to the security community. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.